hate puppies. It's a good podcast. I feel threatened. I just landed. That is the most true statement I've ever heard. <laughs> What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Inside the Pallet House, only podcast dedicated to solving first world problems and hopefully helping you figure out what beer you should or should not be drinking this weekend. I guess we've decided it's not solving them, it's just bringing up first world problems speaking, with the occasional song. Speaking of first world problems, let's not confuse the listeners. Don't worry, Stu is leaving for another vacation tomorrow. <laughs> no, Stu, <laughs> Stu, so Stu is not going to be in town for more than 24 hours. Yeah. And he graced us with his presence. Yes. Where'd you just lucky. come in from, Stu? Uh, spent a good 10 days in Antigua. And where did, what time did you land? Uh, 3 a.m. this morning. Say they're much needed days. Much needed. Well, he needed a break. Yeah. He needed a little vacation. He was, uh, getting a little, uh, tired of the, uh, the old grind. Yes. The rat race was kind of too much for me to take. So we decided to get away. So I bet you you if I put you on the spot right now and asked you to tell me all the places you have been in the last six months, you couldn't even do it. I could probably get half of them in there, maybe. Uh, let's see. Philly. Well, Philadelphia, New York, Avalon, New Jersey, Atlanta, Antigua. Going to Locust Grove tomorrow. Um, and I think I had, in the last six months, Puerto Rico. Did you do London? <laughs> London. And London. Mexico. And Mexico. Yeah. 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 London and Mexico. No, no. Sorry. Just, yeah. Yeah. Just, just lets those ride. So I don't know like if that was in dozen, the six months. That's, that's a dozen m- places in six months. That was March and April, yeah. so I didn't know if that was in the six month window. Nothing on the West Coast. No, but Santa Monica might be in the horizon. Good, good. And I am going to the Marshall Notre Dame game because my mom's bucket list. So the, my, my mom went to Marshall. She grew up Catholic. You've been to Chicago? Yeah, I did go to Chicago. Oh. For, that's right. Did the Pride Fest for me? Can't keep up. For, no, yeah. literally, keep up. Shit. <laughs> no chance he can keep up with all the vacations he's been on. Yeah. This dude does not live here. No. He lives everywhere else. He vacations yeah. here. Keeps a house here. This is where he vacations. Yeah. This is the downtime. Yep. Because the rest of it, it's got to be difficult. All the drinking, eating. Uh, I actually, it's funny you say that. I was looking forward to getting back here to get into the gym and like slow down the uh, consumption. Well, you look great. I feel good. I mean, it was, <laughs> we shut off the uh, social media. We... That's a lie. Uh, I, I almost made it as long as you shut it down. <laughs> I haven't posted on Facebook in a year. No, I was talking about your uh, when you went off the wagon. Okay, look, we went on the wagon. You, you did not. You, you were on Facebook. You were on Be Real. Be Real. I just didn't want to be late. They shut it down because they're used to posting multiple times a day. So not po- so like one a mo- day yeah, yeah. is fine. Well, I didn't do anything on Facebook for I saw pictures seven of days. your girl on Facebook laying on the beach. Right. I did that yesterday. Changed yeah, my profile. Does he have open the sores? It was he, he had to have been picking at himself, like not social media for that long. It's crazy to me. He's like, oh, no, we weren't on social no, media. I put out one picture because she looked good. I put a picture of the sunglasses from the beach because I thought that was fun. And I have 430 other pictures that I didn't even touch. <laughs> yeah, but that's not avoiding social media. That was me. I was like, we're checking out today, yesterday. So I was like, oh, all right. This dude. First world problem. There we go. There is one. What was he complaining about before we fired the bikes up? <laughs> he oh, was yeah. literally. How about these assholes who don't know how to load a plane? He did. It sounded like the worst yeah. Seinfeld sketch ever. He goes, how is it that people still don't know how to board a plane? Yeah. <laughs> Unbelievable. I mean. You know, some people, this is their first vacation in three years. You know, pandemic. A lot of people, it's their first flight. Like, I would assume every flight you go on, there's first timers. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. They're the ones trying to shove way too much luggage in the overhead. Stu's getting high fives (laughs) from the staff. He's over here arguing with them. He's like, actually, you do get free drinks in an exit seat. Yeah. Which, apparently, Stu, Stu schooled us on this. That is a fact, he said. Yeah. American, Delta, United, they all, you pay the upgrade to get in an exit Normally, I would call bullshit. No, but Stu would know. But Stu would know. So I literally was in an exit seat the other day flying to Atlanta with my wife, and she she made a comment. She was like, hey, you know, can can we get like a meal or a drink? And the response from the, he said, it's a short flight. And I was in an that's, exit uh, row. That's an asshole yeah. move. See, we got th- three, and I think it's, 
I mean, I checked it up, so it's supposed to be this way, but it's like almost you have to convince the stewardesses that they're going to you can do this because three of the four legs of the flights there and back one time they charged us and we had to dispute it and then they checked they're like oh yeah i hate i hate arguing over stuff like that i just i don't have the stomach for yeah. it i'll just be like here's five bucks. but the but back to your thing when the guy says it's a short flight that dude can kick rocks like people that are on vacation and people that like to drink if you're on a 30 minute flight and you're offering drinks, that person's going to want to drink. So my yeah. wife interpreted it as they don't have meals because it's a short flight. Well, I, I assume, I assume like, no one has meals anymore, right? I'm not a flyer, but I mean. But you can buy a meal. Even if there's not a meal, you can buy a meal. Yeah. And she was like, can I buy a meal? And he was like, it's a short flight. I thought he was just being like trying to be funny, be a dick. So she was like, oh, they're not serving on this flight. Yeah. But they typically don't do flights if it's less than three hours. Meals, you mean meals. 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 I'm sorry. Yeah. They do. They do, do that makes yeah, they do sense. flights. I mean, because <laughs> you're like a fucking Kardashian. You'll take a yeah. flight if there's traffic from here to the yeah. West End. No, that makes sense. I mean, yeah. In in his defense, yeah, an hour and a half. Well, what's Atlanta? That's not a that's hour. Not, to, yeah, but it's three hours to Miami, and they weren't doing a meal. You can do you can do Atlanta in 45 minutes if they want to. Yeah, yeah. All day. I flew from. That is, I would see your wife doing that though. Like, it's like she's gonna like, uh, ma'am. It's a short flight, and we charge uh, four times that. Yes, and I would still like. Yeah, <laughs> are there bubbles in the champagne or not? Yeah. Right. No, I. So my, I flew. She and I had to fly back from Atlanta, and she flew to Richmond. I flew to Pittsburgh. It took the exact same amount of time in the. Oh yeah. To go between the two. And oh, yeah. one of them is far further. Yeah. I don't know if you know like that. Like double. Yeah. yeah. Like, it's much further. Yeah, these uh, these pilots are making up time in the air because they're, they're short-staffed and they were taken off late or whatever. And then well, Delta's they got a push new, it. Delta's got a new shtick that I'm actually all for. Paying people to stay off the plane? No, they, they <laughs> literally, they'll, they'll say, okay. I could get really rich doing that. <laughs> Here, they, sir, don't fly. Uh, they, now say, they now say it's going to take, like, Two hours to get from here to there. So your landing time, you leave at five, your landing time's at seven. And then when they get you there at six, they yeah. send you a text and it, and it says, another early flight yep. from Delta. I like I'm, like, right, I'm right, here right. for that. I am too. Because you know yeah. what? If yeah. I'm telling people, okay, I won't be there till seven, like I'm, it's yeah. already in my head. So now if something goes wrong and they lose an hour, they're like, we still got this. They're budgeting the. I think that, uh, you know what? Over promise. Or un- under promise, over deliver. Every time. Because the other side of the coin, normally what they win. do is they go, this flight's delayed 20 minutes. And then 20 minutes later, this flight's delayed 20 minutes. It's like, just tell me it was going to be delayed two hours. Yeah. And then mentally, I'm getting ready for the yeah. two hour. And then if it's one hour, I'm doing the Tiger Woods fist pump. Yeah. Like, yes. And if you if you say it's going to take two hours, you get me there in an hour, you look like a hero. Yeah. But yeah. now, if you fuck off for an hour, you're still on time. Yep. Well, I've learned. I'm good with that. Manipulate me. I've learned this year definitely that of the airlines, Delta is one, and then everybody else is two, two A. A distance two. Yeah, distance two. Because American United those don't they don't they don't keep up the way Delta does. It's it's I I hate to agree with Stu, but I that's crazy. I've learned this the hard way. I'm not again. I'm not a world traveler like you two, but I wouldn't have pegged Delta and. I do get like I long for the years of the first the flights from the fifties and sixties that we weren't a part of where mm-hmm. you see pictures and video of old you know, Pan like, Am flights. Man, that looks yeah. so cool. And they're like, here's your steaks. Yeah, they're like you're damn right. There's a documentary on Netflix. I got into it. I can't remember the name of it. Got halfway through it, but it's a it's the documentary of like airline travel, and um. Oh, no, no. I know what it was. What's the guy that uh, stole the money, jumped out the back of the plane? Oh, yeah. D.B. Cooper. D.B. Cooper. Is it, I saw sorry. That. Yeah, 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 it's, yeah. A, it's the D.B. Cooper one. And they start talking about how travel, when hijackings were a thing back in the 60s and 70s, yeah, everybody just one, did it. Oh, yeah. Once a everybody week. But did it, yeah. I actually remember being like six, seven years old with my parents. Yeah, we just walked into the air fa- air- airline and paid cash right there at the counter for a ticket. There's no. You just, yeah, it was like taking a bus. Yeah. It's like, that's what you did. Yeah. <laughs> it's wild to think like, I booked a hotel and bought tickets for a baseball game today in on my phone. And I was and I always think about it whenever I do anything on the computer or phone, I'm like, how did you find flight like how do you find flights fifty years ago, thirty years ago? Like you show up. 
or call. Call. Yeah. Yeah. I guess call. Well, it's like uh, I saw a meme the other day. The kid was on the, his kid on the phone. And it's like how you used to get movie times. Oh yeah, <laughs> on a landline. On a landline, just call up and listen. I called four one one the other day. And what happened? They connected me to somebody, and it freaked me out. I hung up. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? That's how it used to work. Yeah. You would talk to a human. But then when I got connected to a human, I panicked. I was like, oh my gosh, there's what really was a human. The, was it, what was the number for time and weather? There used to be a landline number you could tell the same there thing. There was. Like, yeah. And I can't remember. I don't know. I was you somewhere. set your clock to it. Yeah. You'd be like, the power <laughs> went out. I need to know the time. Because when, this the, is when a, the power went out in your house, you did not know the time. There was Unless you had something battery operated, you're like. Or uh, a sundial. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like we should all have sundials. And back in the day, the phone still it was sound. It would still work even though yeah, the power the was out. Yep. So you could just pick up the phone, and get a dial tone. It's nice. Now you have battery operated phones and things to plug in. Do y'all get pissed when your phone doesn't work somewhere? <clears throat> well, yeah. Isn't it wild? Just like, yeah. why is this thing working? No, when I was yeah. traveling down to your lake house, and like, oh yeah, I, oh. I, I got to a certain <laughs> point where all of a sudden yep. my GPS went out. Like everything mm. shut down, and I was at a dead end. I was like, this can't be right. And then I tried to get service and i was like i can't believe i don't have service there's a there's a flying j right there there's a yeah. mcdonald's i should have perfect service it's unacceptable what's really maddening <laughs> with me with the phone is i'm like it half works where it like starts to load up and then it stops i'm like are you working or are you not working what are we yeah. doing here don't tease me yeah <laughs> they had this cell phone provider in antigua the, the name of it was called flow that was the name of the provider. Sounds Flow. cool. Shout and out on, to on, Flow. The top, on the top of your phone, just said Flow, and it worked better than if you tried to connect to the local Wi-Fi on the resort. But is that a I first thought, world? Is that a second world? Yeah, problem? Antigua. It's not quite third. It's world. in a third world. It's its own country. Like it's its oh, own little. That's not saying much. No. <laughs> the guys, so they, they, I do, de <laughs> they declared their independence. Yeah, a long time ago. At is it one of those places you only stay at the resort though when you go? No, no, we went. Uh, no, you can go the whole island. Ninety percent of the income is our GDP is tourism, yeah, and they're just problem. they're just recovering because the pandemic really crushed them. But you see, you know, cows on chains in the backyard. People are using. I mean, it's it's. That's the problem. If you're not working for the tourist industry, you're struggling. Yeah. When your GDP is based entirely on tourism, that's a problem. Yeah, that's yeah. But that's it's uh, how there's, many major how many major U.S. cities though operate on that? I mean, a lot of them, right? On tourism entirely? Not entirely, but like a big chunk of it. Sure, like Niagara Hawaii. Falls, like yeah. whatever cities just outside of Niagara Falls. Hawaii, it's tourism. Yeah, Hawaii's got to have business. But like even like New York and Chicago, like there's a lot of tourists that go to those cities every year. Like that's got to hurt when those industries get hit. I mean, it's a yeah. real threat. So not to make it like about what I care about but like the bears are talking about moving their stadium from outside of the from inside the city to outside the city to a, a place called arlington heights and they're like they're kind of like holding holding the gun at the mayor's head like they're not the first ones though a lot of yeah a lot no, of but it's just interesting yeah. to watch it play out they're like you realize how much money we bring in and the mayor's like no we don't have to give you much and they're like okay but if you look at it, there's a huge, and all that money is going to go to Arlington Heights. Yeah. yeah. You're fucking up. It'll be interesting to watch how it plays out. Hmm. That's, that's the reality, though. Like, how many people fly into Chicago to go to a Cubs game? It happens all the time. Oh, all oh, the yeah. time. Yeah. I've done it. Yeah. And then I spend money everywhere else. Yep. Well, that's money that wouldn't have shown up. Yeah. I don't think the Cubs will move, but the Bears. Oh, the Bears are moving. The Cubs, will, Cubs are going to have to move at some point. They just invested so much into Wrigley. They actually took like a block all the way around and created like a whole complex. So they're yeah, but at some point in. you can't band aid the the fee, the stadium. Like they did a they expanded on the stadium. And yeah, they didn't expand the inside outside of the visitors dugout, which was known as like one of the worst in the world. But they expanded the dugouts and stuff. But then everything else is just. <laughs> restaurants internally yeah. vip yeah. areas like club stuff like they've done a pretty good job i think they're planning on staying there for a little while yeah i'm oh, sure shit. i mean if they could get another 20 30 years out of it, but i'm saying at some point you gotta you gotta knock it down and start over the crazy thing think? is have either one of you toured wrigley i mean uh I've fin been, fenway I've park been, i've never been to boston or boston. chicago so I've, I, I didn't go to the game but i toured the the uh fenway and the visitor's locker room at fenway is literally three feet in any direction bigger than this 
than the power yeah, house. That's exactly how Wrigley's was. And it's like they wanted they did it that way to make it miserable. Yeah, it's great. But you, you take you take the tour and they have one the very first locker. It's just an open like high school. I mean it's yeah. just an open thing and it's Jeter's jersey right there. They show you where he's he always put his stuff in when he was playing ball. In Fenway? Yeah. Like when he's playing against Boston. <clears throat> yeah. This is where Jeter's locker was. It was the very first one. Why would they have a Yankees just on the tour yeah. jersey in there? Because that's the, the rivalry. Yeah, but like. But why would I? It just seems weird. I mean, I, Brendan and I know, like, that doesn't fly with Chicago and St. Louis. Like, that wouldn't. No. <laughs> I don't have Pujols' jersey no. hanging. No. I don't well, I think it's part. only been since maybe he retired, but who knows? They, they should just burn kept, it. They just kept there's pointing out. There's probably somebody getting paid or doing some paying. I'm sure there's That a, is so weird. I'm I'm if you burnt it to, once a week or every or every <laughs> game, I'd be like, I get it. Yeah. Yeah. But to hang it? That oh, seems like, like, like a bad says, omen. They had it squared off as like this is Jeter's locker and it's right there. I'm sure, you know, that's just for the tour. So but. weird. That is odd. Maybe it's a promo for the uh his series, the captain or whatever he's doing. Oh, I don't know. What's this? I don't know anything about well, this. This was he's, back in – this was the day – I toured Fenway the day before opening day this year. He's so. doing one of those 10-part oh, Brady then, documentaries. Why, did you put that on your list? No. We were touring Boston College for yep. one of the kids. This son of a bitch and is everywhere but here. He's been more in the past six – he's been – I mean, I've already said it. He's been more places in a month than I've been in my lifetime. It's crazy. Yeah. It is wild, dude. It's – Thank you, real estate. <laughs> yeah, all you homeowners, that's, this, this is what you're uh, paying for. Yeah. <laughs> Worked for it, man. When? <laughs> yeah. When? I got so many. When? Oh, my when? God. When? Did you not just hear the list of vacations? Like, when's the work? Yeah, when do you work? Well, the biggest change is the fact that I went out on my own. In the last year and a half, I went out on my own. So, the... You know, I did my four years of dues and five of real estate crap. None of us are buying this. Objection! Here's <laughs> yeah. it. I just no, it's been good. If you're not close. standing in a townhome on a Sunday afternoon, you can pound sand. <laughs> yeah. I'm just, I'm shocked. Uh, no, I'm taking advantage of the time I have because it's not always going to be there. So that is a fact. Unfortunately, yeah. that is life. You know, I cut what year and a half. I'll be half century. Oh my god! Might as well look it. Are you that old, dude? That is so <laughs> old. <laughs> Ew! But, no, damn it! <laughs> oh no! Someone peed in my pants. That will be happening. <laughs> oh, I thought Brendan was old, but that's uh, that's crazy. Brendan's Brendan's looking better and better with his long do. Yeah, he's got something going on there. Can't wait! To, can't wait! Can't wait for the beard to come matching in. <laughs> I don't even know if I'm going beard this or year. Or stash? Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, the, the hair is so long. Like, I don't know if I need more. Oh, the mustache is gonna look. Sick. Yeah, the stash with Shit. the hair. You'll be like, okay, what are we doing? Yeah, you'll look real fly. <laughs> the hair is getting long. It is like just been doing a thing. It's got uh, <laughs> waves to it. Like I had this whole vision in my head of like what my hair would look like when I grew it out. That's not what my hair does. It's, I can't. That's why like, I don't grow mine out. I slick it back, and then like two hours later, there's like flares and curls yeah. and like. This son of a bitch showed up because some people. I'm not gonna say who or whom uh -oh. or how many people. I don't know where this is. Going. But I can't wait. Had a birthday party for one of our fraternity bros, and he shows up in this like he just walked off of, you know, the beach. He's got his surfer hair and his. White shirt, and he's like, "Oh, nice. here, Lord like taking over." People are like, "Huh?" Half on butt. Look at Brendan. What's he doing? <laughs> All linen up. I expected a far <laughs> worse session. I'm like, I'm like hearing that. I'm like, that dude sounds dope as shit. Yeah, pulling off the long hair. That guy sounds cool. Yeah, like I was, I was expecting to get just raked through the coals. Like he'd shit on his shoes, toilet no, paper. No, 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 no. Looked like a homeless no. person. He no, like, it was he had one good night. We all know the backstory, but oh wow, <laughs> I'll, take I'll take it. I'll take it every time. Oh hey, uh, we got a shout out from a listener, uh, Alex. Uh, another listener loving the board, loving the way we sound. It sounds so much better. Yeah, it really does sound better. I can't argue. And Flo sending in that money on the Venmo that only only helps to make it better. Yep. 
I'll keep shouting him out because no one else sent him fucking money. <laughs> I got to go back to the well. The California kid. The one man. Coming in. And he's a Be Real friend. BP Kennedy 34 on Be Real. That's right. Uh, oh, he also pointed out that uh, Richard's Rendezvous was uh, Golden Corral before it was a Richard. Before really? it was Richard's. Which I always knew it was some You know restaurant. what's hilarious? That's hilarious. I don't know which one I'd rather not eat at. <laughs> <laughs> Richard's had good food. (laughs) Richard's had good food. Richard's had a great club sandwich. For those Mm. that don't know, Richard's Rendezvous is a strip club. We talked about it. I know, but there's people who are tuning in this week. Go back. So it was a a golden corral. Yeah. Chocolate fountain. (laughs) Love it. You'll walk out of either of those establishments a little bit depressed with yourself. Yeah, wash your hands. <laughs> <laughs> and that's good advice anytime. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, just just yeah. Golden Corral, Richard's Rendezvous, wash your hands. Anything offering a buffet, not good. I had to get a uh, <laughs> I had to get a trailer this this week. Oh, that's so, right. You uh you got a motorcycle, right? I do. I have a motorcycle in the garage right I now. I saw the picture. Yeah. I was wondering what was going on. It's a nineteen seventy seven Triumph Bonville seven fifty. Ooh. Is that? I don't know what any of that. I mean, I, that is I, a classic British motorcycle. Is it valuable? Uh to me, I know. Does it, I knew does that it was, work? Uh, kind of. Oh, okay. Because <laughs> <laughs> when you say trailer and new motorcycle, I'm like, hmm. Well, when you say British <laughs> and, and motorsports, uh, dude, as soon as I, I pulled it up and I looked down in there and I saw the wiring and there were like harnesses and it says Lucas Electric. And I was like, boy, <laughs> that is just Lucas the first thing you do with anything British from the 70s, 80s, 90s today. Yeah. <laughs> Pull the electrical, yeah. put into it. But Lucas, they were famous for making the worst electrical systems. Just <laughs> awful. You know, like the old, the old uh, saying was, you don't, you don't get a car that was built on a Friday, yeah, or a car that's mm-hmm. built on like a Monday. Like you don't want them because like the the factory, you don't get a British any day. Because they're always drunk. Yeah. And they're always disgruntled. <laughs> and they don't give a shit. They make beautiful cars. Beautiful cars. But none of them run worth a crap. They're gorgeous. They're it, Seriously, the Italians and the Brits, the lines they cut on, on vehicles, just yeah. gorgeous. The Italians and Brits can't make a car that stays on the road. Yeah. It, it's horrible. But that Is the thing, bike in good shape? It's in shape. <laughs> I'm how's assuming the, it hasn't the seat? been run. Seat's back on it. Oh, okay. Seat wasn't on it on the first picture I took. Um, so yeah. your dad hadn't ridden in a minute. Nah. So this bike, this bike's been in my family since I was four. Oh wow! So like I got pictures of me sitting on the gas 48. tank riding out like this. Well, it's a '77. Yeah. So it was it was old when he got it. A few years. <laughs> <laughs> but so uh, it's it's something that's been in the family forever, and my Wait. dad was always like, "You can you can have it one day." And I was always like, yeah, don't you dare sell that. Like, he sold his Harley, and I was like, breaks my heart to see it go, but I get it. Can aren't, you you the same, aren't you the same age as the bike? Uh, not technically. No. Oh, a year off. Can you ride that bike? Uh, yeah. Well, like, currently? No, like, can you? I've never ridden a full-size Am motorcycle. Am I capable? Yes. Yes. Do you have a motorcycle's license? No longer. I have let it lapse. I did it one time. When he moved down here from Northern Virginia, That's, he was in Carytown, he had a bike. Mm-hmm. I know, but... And I've never ridden a full size motorcycle, but I'm assuming riding a cro- a purple crotch rocket is different than riding that bike. Not that much. Really? So this is an old seven fifty. It's probably every bit as light as my old crotch rocket. And it's certainly lighter than any Harley you could get. Like even yeah. a sportster, like the basic bitch Harley, it's lighter than that. What do they call it style of bike though? This one you got? If I had to put a def- uh, definition, I'd call it a cafe racer. That's what I th- I wanted to say the word, but I wasn't. I didn't want to sound like an idiot because I didn't, wasn't sure. Yeah, those are the, small. Those are with yeah, the, and the handlebars are down here, down low, but, 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 not, but the way the seat is, yeah, yeah. I would I would call it a cafe. Looks like a racer. banana seat. But it wasn't back then. It wasn't a cafe it's just racer. A new bike. It's <laughs> a motorcycle. Yeah. yeah, but it's it's badass. It's beautiful. We've had it forever, but apparently it has fallen into some hard times. So there was. Years ago when I was in college, young Jimmy and I actually rebuilt it at one point. It was in like parts. My dad had taken it apart. And I was like, why? You're not talking about like you didn't rebuild the motor. 
no, no, no. Like the parts were off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They just had to be put back on. Like building a model. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Essentially. <laughs> you know, like we didn't have to like go in and like change the head gasket. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He and young Jimmy, they finish. Where but is, we did have this to like, go? Yeah, what's this extra part? <laughs> we did have to like clean the carburetor. You know, I have a basic working knowledge yeah. of that motorcycle. So like we took all the parts and, and my dad had done a really good job. They, like masking tape labeled, like yeah. this is the pet cock, this is this. So like you come in and just kind of put it back together and kick-started that bitch and it fired right up nice we were like hell yeah that's good so we had gotten it that far we drove it around the neighborhood we were like cool so it doesn't have a bunch of extra electrical crap on it it's just no the electrical crap it has is crap is crap yeah but so original electrical oh yeah all of it no i was looking at the harness that is a lucas electrical harness from the 70s Mm. i'm like boy we'll pull all that out and go full japanese that bike's 45 years old it's an old bike. Yeah. And so apparently when we rebuilt it, it then got moved into the basement as a showpiece and has just been left like that. Oh, wow. And so... Was it drained of everything or anything like that? Hell no. Just sitting. Because every so often you, you could go down there and kick it over and it would fire up. Ah. You'd be like, sweet. And then turn it <laughs> off. But then after a while, it stopped starting. Uh. And now like I'm looking at like every rubber piece is kind of corroded yep dry like rot everything and it just mm. would not be safe even if you could get it running there's a lot of things that need to be replaced and as i was going through and so in the last like couple months when my parents were selling the house the realtor was like you can't have that in the basement yeah and my dad's like you can it's dope as shit like it looks cool right hey we have a real estate agent right here he'll tell you take everything out oh, of the I damn know. house <laughs> I mean, paint, it, paint it neutral colors yeah. god forbid you have any flair that's that's don't one. have one picture of your family because oh, God forbid no. someone else had lived in this house. Before I have to you. picture it with someone else. Gross. Yeah. Yeah. As a buyer, you want to see that look. But as a seller, you're like, why can't I just show the house the way I live in it? Because that's what you end up looking like. By the way, you know? all, I, I swear, I still believe this. Most of that real estate nonsense is bullshit. Like, yes, for certain people. But I saw the house we bought, the house I live in was completely empty. Oh, there's two there's two schools of thought on so, the whole process. And people are like, "Don't do that." And then, like again, if I re- if I if I saw a house that had somebody's family photo in it, I wouldn't be like, "Gross, get me out of here." Yeah. Now I understand there are idiots out there because I watch enough of these homeowner shows where they're like, "I don't like the color in this room." It's like it's a color. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's not yeah. part of the house. You know like, what I'm what doing this doing? weekend? Painting two rooms. Yeah. Come paint my bathroom. Just changing colors. You yeah. can change colors. I already no, got. But I you- got a bathroom. If you want to count that. <laughs> Third room. My kids' bathroom hadn't been painted in like a year, and I will not do it. I sold a house two years ago that every so it was a traditional colonial, about twenty five hundred square feet, and it had eight rooms, and every room was a completely different color. The kitchen was orange, the living room was lime green, the dining room was like blue, and it, so did you make a, them paint it? Mm, Luckily, I didn't have to because of the area it was in. People would have bought the place regardless. Okay. Yeah. So okay. there's a, there's a you know there's a lot of different factors, but yeah, yeah. You, especially like you go into some of these houses, and you're like, oh, we want to sell our house. I'm like, well, you're not a hoarder, but you have more sitabouts and things I understand, on every like, stage. Like, cleaning up, but yeah. like the whole like staging houses just seems ridiculous well, to me. Like when I sold my personal house, because they've like where they. they Take your furniture out and then put like fake new furniture. So <laughs> like, here's what right. I, here's what fake I did. TV. Yeah, yeah. This, is, this is what I did. My house was sold empty. I painted the whole thing, yeah. redid the floors. It was empty, but because of where we are these days, guess what? When you looked online on Zillow, it was virtual photos. So there was beds, there were couches. Oh, they put there was, virtual beds. They put yeah. virtual pictures, so you get an idea of what it could look like. But when you show up, which I kind of like, an empty house. You leave the buyer, their their brain can yeah, do what they like want. Like I said, do. our house was empty 15 years ago, and I actually enjoyed it because I was like, oh, I it's kind of new. I thought yeah. it was new, even though I knew a family with six kids lived there before me. Like, it was like, oh, I don't see their yeah. kids' crap everywhere. I think the biggest problem is her. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, poor woman. I know. They had more kids. Oh, God. Jeez. I think they have seven or eight kids now. Good for them. Mormons. The biggest. Oh, I, I <laughs> yeah. literally Mormons thought it yeah, didn't yeah. say <laughs> The biggest problem is when you have people who have a decent house and they just have way too much oversized furniture. Yeah. Like you've got a seven person L shaped plush couch in a room that's 10 by 12. With a recliner. Yeah. With, and you and can't even ottoman. move anything. Yeah. Like that, this is screwed. <laughs> so that, that, that takes me to my point. Uh, Stu earmuffs. 
So this fucking asshole real estate agent <laughs> told my dad to move. You could just say real estate agent. Move the, it's implied. <laughs> yeah. Mm. That's redundant. Told my dad to move the fucking motorcycle outside. Yeah. So he puts it outside under the deck under a tarp. In his defense, you don't want to see a motorcycle with gas and oil in your home. I get it. But you know what? There's a whole storage area in the basement. They could have just rolled it over there. Yeah. But instead, she insisted on it goes outside. So what? puts the damn thing outside. Under a tarp, probably six to eight weeks, somewhere in there, this bike had never, ever been outside. It had been in garaged or inside air conditioned. Yeah. His whole life, 40 some fucking years. It's been baby. Oh, what fell apart on it? Nothing fell apart, but all of a sudden there's there's surface rust on the chrome. Yep. On all well, of those the- tarps, they keep moisture off, but they also keep it in. Dude, when I pulled the tarp off, there was a frog sitting on the bike. I was yeah. Like, this you basically created a sauna. It's yeah. going to be yeah. hot, all wet, of the, rust. The, the brakes, the, the brakes were like like just surface Stuck. rust together. Yeah. I was like, come on, man! In that little amount of time, that bike went from pristine to now. I got to get a bunch of like so you're gonna barkeepers. Are you gonna friend. take it out? I mean, uh, like fix it up. I have to. If I was your dad, right? I'd call the realtor back and say, look, based on your suggestion, I did what you did. You owe me this for parts and parts. Yeah. I So basically now <laughs> I'm at a point where I can either start f- sourcing old Triumph parts yeah. and slowly rebuild it, or I can just drop it off somewhere, which ultimately the middle ground, I need to find a guy. Yeah. A guy is the answer because it'll cost half as much. Because you don't have a timeline. So it could be like, hey, guy. I yeah. have no time. Yeah. yeah. Get your. I don't care. When you get around to it. I don't care if he has it for a fucking year. Yeah. Just get yeah. it back to me so I can hit that Kickstarter. Because what's yeah. cooler than yeah. a Kickstarter? A Kickstart that thing. <laughs> <laughs> An e bike that has no engine, no parts, just boom. <laughs> okay. This is a carbureted Kickstart motorcycle. British I know. Motorcycle. A lot of times I wish uh-huh. I could just go out and crank start my car and that stupid key gets in the way and shit. Like, come on, man. You're mocking me, but <laughs> <laughs> I agree. I no. think it would be dope as shit to crank start a car. Yeah, you would till you snap Well, no, your to arm. your point though, like my brother Brian for for his boat. He found a guy that it's the one he did the entire interior of his boat, like all the flooring, all the stitching, all the leather, the steering wheel, everything. And he found a guy, and it's just one guy in a leather? warehouse, well, whatever vinyl. They, the vinyl, yeah. But he's just one guy, and he's the one that was. And he's like, yeah, it'll be about nine months before I get started on it. But if you got the time, but that's fine. Right well now, it's it. just yeah. taking up room. Yeah, I literally had your to garage take- is already a shit. <laughs> oh no, so I'm, here's how I made room. I pulled the riding mower out. So I went and got the... Oh, that was the whole point. I went and got... <laughs> the trailer. I, I went and got this trailer, right? And I was looking, and it said that it was past the Paper Moon, which is another strip club, but it was right next to Pure Pleasure, which is another strip yeah. club that I didn't even know was over there. Were you at the U-Haul? Yes. It's right, uh, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. right there on Midlow. So I didn't even know there was a Pure Pleasure there. So I just like... I discovered a new strip club. Yeah, wait, 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 wait. How long have you been in Richmond? I've never been to that place. I that's, haven't either. Those yeah. are the, those are the two for the but south that, side over there. Isn't the pure pleasure off Midlow? It's not. It's three blocks I, I back. Never, yeah, I yeah, never, yeah. apartment oh, complex. That's yeah. where. Okay, because I never found it. I had that. Oh, you yeah. all do my tow hitch on. Yeah, on yeah a car. it's a great, great yeah. spot. But so they had motorcycle trailer, which motorcycle trailers far cheaper. And after the podcast last week, I measured yeah. the, the the riding mower, and I was like, "Yo, this will fit." So I went up there, got it nightmare situation apparently i didn't have the proper wiring harness well i apologize because you know we have a trailer you should have just texted me uh yeah Ely has one too i just wanted it was 15 dollars a day oh. for a motorcycle <laughs> yeah, trailer yeah. that has it. perfect tie down straps yeah. it's exactly the right width and like and it has a wheel chalk and you the want front. the smallest trailer i wanted the smallest yeah. trailer because backing up's a whole thing for me so i went and got <laughs> like went and got the right trailer but then so to make room I put the riding mower on, drove it over to a small engine repair place, and they were like, we're not going to be able to even look at this for at least three weeks. And I was like, make it four. Yeah. <laughs> Just take the riding mower it's that doesn't It's free work. to keep it here, right? Yeah. right, right. No, I was thinking storage. <laughs> yeah. These assholes under-promised and over-delivered called me this week. With it's already a, fixed? With a quote. Oh, man. These motherfuckers. They said they wouldn't look at it for at least three weeks. And now these assholes got in a week. I was like... What are you doing? I, so wait, was, your, was, your, was your plan to be able to have the lawnmower gone long enough to where you could repair the bike 
or fix the garage. Oh, like clean up the road. Yeah. Okay. So but now you got to expedite fixing the garage. Yeah. And they were like, well, it's going to be tough to source some of these parts. And I was like, make sure you do, do your due diligence and finding yeah, yeah, the right yeah. part. Take your time. <laughs> Take your time. But I felt pretty confident. I went in there and I was like, hey, make sure you turn off the gas. Otherwise, it floods. And the, the, this like 16 year old kid behind the counter is like, oh, you got the Briggs and Stratton uh, N45 yeah, or whatever the hell. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, that's exactly the kind of engine I got on there. And he's Which like, small engine places you go to? The Birchards. Birchards. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, this guy, this this kid knew everything. And then the lady, the lady pops her head out, like the like seventy year old lady. Oh yeah, then Briggs and Stratton's are famous for that. Don't worry, honey, we got that. <laughs> and then the kid's like, you don't want to fix that though. That's a carburetor issue, and it's going to cost hundred bucks if you just keep turning it off, turning it on. And that's hundred bucks just for the part. Now he's, you don't want that. And I'm like, I love you. <laughs> like this is exactly right. Yeah. Like this, they got it. So that's where it is. Apparently, right now, you didn't walk in with your Dickies jacket on. <laughs> no, I didn't. In fact, I'm such a schmuck, I couldn't back the trailer in, so I just parked on the road in front of there. I don't. Does a Dickies jacket mean you're a small engine guy? No, I don't yeah, know. If it does. Uh, maybe small engines are a whole different yeah. animal. I got to go in there with the biggest dip possible in my mouth yeah. and a shirt covered in stains. Yep, and like maybe overalls or something. Jorts. Yeah, jorts. Jorts. <laughs> jorts. Is how you get small engine repair yeah. at cost. But either way, they're taking care of it. But now, shout out to the listeners. If anybody knows anyone who works on old British motorcycles or old motorcycles. Like, mm. And I'm talking on the side. Not a guy who works at some shop. Yeah. Not like, the guy that works at Euro, Moto. Yeah. You no. know, yeah. don't bring We don't want to bring it there. His no. part-time hobby that he gets paid for. Yeah. Yes. Like, he does it as a <laughs> career, but he also does it on the side. Yeah, a side hustle. He loves doing it. Yeah, this is what he does while drinking beers at night. Exactly. Because I, I want, I want every grommet taken out. Yeah. Everything changed. I want this thing to to run right because it's not safe right now. Mm. I does it need body work or anything? Nah, body's perfect. It just needs basic. You know, like it needs. I want new. I want all new suspension. You gonna new, ride it? New tires. I'll ride it. I, I actually, I'm gonna go get my license again. But truth be told. I'm I'm not a motorcycle guy anymore. Like they're scary. You can die. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. so I was. It's funny. Like being motorcycle riding. Um, like as you get older, I was talking with a friend of mine, and he's like, "Yeah, it's." And he's forty seven, I think, forty six. And he's like, "I was a king of. I didn't heights didn't bother me." He's like, "In the last ten years, I can't go up high." Yeah, that's yeah. You, get, you get the fear as you get yeah, older. Like, okay. And I I sold that motorcycle when I first moved to Richmond. I mean, I was yeah. in my twenties, and I just. I had I had a scare. I had a really bad scare. I almost got hit head on. It like freaked me out. I sold the bike, and that was like that was that. I had two summers where I was like, "This is a lot of fun. Mm. I like riding around on the bike." Yeah, I've never ridden. I've ridden dirt bikes, but I've never ridden a motorcycle. And it's the one rule my wife has is no motorcycles, and I cannot. With my background, I definitely can't argue that. I can't like be for the my wife doesn't care if i die so she was yeah. like you can you should do it helmet laws come on don't be a, pussy. a real man that's what she said to me yeah. she said don't be a pussy and i yeah. was like what are you talking about she and then was she like, was out there adjusting the brakes <laughs> <laughs> she's she like, was I, helping me fix it up you why do you have a it? box cutter <laughs> you need to be riding that barefoot yeah shorts oh. no helmet no shirt that's well the funny thing is is that <laughs> this is coming from the guy who's going to He's saying he's not into the motorcycle anymore. He wants his motorcycle. I'm not going to drive it because it's a well, little I'm going to drive it. He'll drive but, it. But at the same time, you're going to do 30 miles an hour on your electric skateboard at in the dark with yeah, the rocks. that's true. So that's, that's, the, <laughs> that's the reality of, of who I am is I probably will ultimately end up – once I get it going, I probably will end up riding it around. But right now in my mind – Well, you know this is the guy that's sentimental. So, I mean – I like the sentimental. Gonna, I like the sentimental. But wouldn't you? I mean, like, if there was a, a classic motorcycle in your family, and like your dad, I guess like, about yeah, hey, I mean, come get I guess. it. You, you, I know, I know personally. I'd love to have my first car. You know, yeah. like so, it's kind of be the same thing. It's basically it. I mean, the, like, there's pictures of me as a four year old sitting on this bike. Like, yeah, my dad would take me out, and that was, that was the big weekend thing. We'd go to the paddle wheel. It was mm. a restaurant that had a big fucking paddle wheel. Yeah. And if we could make it all the way to the paddle wheel, that was a mission to me. I was like, holy <laughs> shit. We went all the way to the paddle I bragged to my friends. I went out to the paddle wheel on a motorcycle. And like, nice. that's the exact bike. So like, yeah, I want to, I want it to run. I don't want it to just sit there. Yeah. I mean, so, that's kind of how I, I don't know if it's, I don't know if it'll happen. I hope it would, but like, I don't think I'll sell the Fiat. 
I think I'll try and keep that for it's in the garage. I'll try and keep that for a very long time and maybe down the road it'll just kids will get it next. That could be a, a collector's cool car. car. It will be. I mean, they only made it for like four years. Yeah. Well, I think well, that's I have the first year, the 2017. I think they're making it again. So it'll be a five year run. But I don't know if they're going to make it after that. Fiat it's just, Fiat yeah, just but a lot of people a, don't have them. No, they're very rare. No, because like one of our good buddies said, that comes in here all all the time on football Sundays. Was like, you know, you got to fix those Fiats. <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> it's a Mazda. Side. Everything but the engine and the yeah, frame, engines. not the frame, the body. But yeah, engine, it should hold up. Engines don't go wrong, and if you don't hit anything, no, yeah, it's yeah. Fucked. But I get you on the sentimental. Like I wish I. Yeah. Still had some. Still had your first horse drawn carriage? <laughs> <laughs> Gas lamp. Yeah. Uh, the 1983 Honda three wheeler. Those are dangerous. Yeah. Those were Those. fun. Those are dangerous. Even that yard darts and three wheelers. Let them go. <laughs> yeah. Let them go. Yard Motorcycles, dart. safety first. The funny thing that. I, hey, Stu, grab a belly. The funny thing to me about the motorcycle is. The safety features we make cars have to have just keeps growing and growing and growing. And then, but we're still at the same moment, like, but you can ride a motorcycle. I mean. Yeah. With a brain bucket. Yeah. Yeah. And that's not even everywhere, but like. Not in cool states. (laughs) The the thing that's wild. I mean, again, like your, your car now has like side impact airbags, crumple zone, emergency brakes, like. Just all kinds of crazy stuff, and then they're like, "Oh, you don't want you don't want all that. Just jump on that motorcycle and have fun." Well, it's funny. Like for a hot second, just the other day, um, as a preemptive move, I was thinking, "Okay, what if I have to take care of my mom later on in life?" I was like, "I got stairs," so I googled one of those little power chairs that goes up the stairs just to you know look at it. And now all of a sudden, you mean the one that mounts to the stairs? It's yeah, like just go up mounts to the walls yeah. at a track. I was like, "What if I have to get her up and down stairs?" Because you know. I, don't have a bedroom downstairs. You better serve just building them. Well, so I looked at that for a hot second, and then all of a sudden I get all these um, uh, images, and one of the things that popped up was these, like, backpacks that you can put on an elderly person, and if they start to fall, airbags oh, expand. Yeah. Oh, I've seen those. To I've protect seen, their hips. I've seen and the ones that go around your neck and... They they inflate to a helmet. If okay, like yeah, yeah, crazy. This, was, this was literally like wearing a parachute pack. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was a little bit smaller than that, but it inflated, so it came up behind your head and around your back and around your hips. Well, that's what kills elderly people right. a lot. Because I know my mom. Yeah, dude, that's like if you're over eighty and your hip breaks. It's yeah. like, well, my mom's seventy. Like a horse. Yeah, it's not good. Now she's bring the tarp out. She's mid seventy. She's seventy five, and if she knows, but based on osteoporosis, if she breaks a hip, she's done. That happens. That's so, the age. But, but that was like, but what that made me think of, because when you're saying with the motorcycle, I was like, yeah, motorcycles are, don't some have airbags? No, I don't know that. I mean, if anyone does, I'd say it's the Honda Gullwing. Yeah. Uh, the big lazy boy on wheels. Yeah, that thing is amazing. <laughs> 5,000 watt stereo. You know, it's like. You can hear those guys coming. <laughs> not, not, the, uh, not the bike itself, but the radio. Yeah. They got those speakers just blaring. Mm-hmm. Hey, I got a deli for us. Mm-hmm. Where'd you and get this I one think, from? Uh, Total Wine. So okay. I was, I had, nice. I had, uh, I had popped in Total Wine last week, and there was a Flying Dog Brewery representative there. Oh, mm-hmm. which I'm a, I'm a sucker for any time there's a just tasting. You know, what was she I mean? cute? He was adorable. Oh, so that's why you ended up with it, dude. He was just <laughs> couldn't a, say no. He was just a. <laughs> Big pothead. Big doe eyes no. looking at you. No, big red eyes. <laughs> oh, it was just stone to the bone. It was Smells like, delicious. Dude, so all right. So we, we tried two beers, my wife and I, right? And I, one I, of, I don't think I'm a flying dog fan. So I like I like some flying dog. But I know what you're saying. Like they can be hit yeah. or miss. They can be hit or miss. And I tasted this. Now I only had, you know, a, a, a little sniff. Yeah. It. And it was I had this one. And I was like, okay, that's that's pretty good. And then I had this IPA they do, and I was like, that's fucking amazing. But my wife swears this is a deli. Like a deli winner. Yeah, yeah. Okay. She goes, as soon as she tasted it, she goes, You gotta sit you gotta get a six pack of that for a deli. And anytime she shows any interest in this shit, I'm yeah. like, Oh yeah. I'm sold. 
So I bought it. And I then also, the rep knew exactly what she was talking about because he's a huge listener. Yeah, he was like, does everyone like it? <laughs> that was the first thing he said. And so uh, I picked up this one. This is the Chesapeake Wheat from, from Flying Dog. And they have another one that, honestly, I think I'm going to try. Tangerine Wheat Beer. I think I'm going to try the other one next week. That's how good. I thought the other one was the better beer. She thought this was the better beer. I think this is the more agreeable beer. Can for you the read masses. it? Can you see it, Stu? Yeah, there's just a, well, there's not a description of the beer necessarily on the can, but what the can does talk about is that um, Flying Dog and the Oyster Recovery Partnership, sales of this beer will go to help preserve the Chesapeake Bay, and for every can that you drink, it's like it 60 adds oysters or 10 shit. oysters back to the bay. Okay, nice. so 60 in um, a six-pack, yeah. that's what I was looking at. So, yeah, so that's what they're, they're just talking about, the sales. They haven't said anything much about the beer content itself. You don't need to. No. So What's the ABV? 5%. Five. Nice. Which I think is just right. Great number. You know what I mean? Give me five every yeah. time. I'll above, that. above five is strong, and below five is a little weak. Yeah, and they came in at five, five point on oh. the nose. Vanilla ice that shit. That's right. Mm. Respect it. Rag top down so the hair can blow. You get it. A one A Beachfront Avenue. So I, I thought this beer was very interesting when I had it, and I, I you know, immediately because I started delling it right there in front of the dude. I was like, oh, and and I'm, all the the flavors are coming right back to me. It's got a lot going on. What I like about this, here's the pros. The tangerine is nice. Very nice. It's got a tangerine. nice tangerine. Yeah. The wheat, it's not a full like hefeweizen. Yeah. But it still has like a little pepperiness, a little bit of that banana, like a like a true hefeweizen. Yeah. But a bastardized version, what we would consider an American wheat beer, like a Widmer Brothers or a Pyramid. Yeah. So it's a little more mellow, but it still has that pepper. You know, it has that little bit of pepper. A little bit of bite. A little bit of tangerine. So I liked that going in. Now it's time to dissect it and really find out what's wrong with it. But I thought I thought it was agreeable enough that it was worth it was worth putting down and worth worth bringing in. So I'd be interested to see what people think. I think it's fun up front and not a whole lot on the back end. So it's a reverse mullet. <laughs> yeah, the party's <laughs> on the front end. I mean, yeah. it's tears uh, over it's, your it's, eyes. It's really interesting. Yeah. Uh, hmm. I mean, who, who wants to go for it? flying? Flying Dog has the weirdest design stuff. I'm sure Stu likes it. Well, I'm I'm already uh, just knowing that they're giving uh, money back to the uh, for the oysters. I love like oysters. That. I love oysters, and the fact that they're yeah. Okay, respect. <clears throat> so respect. there's the marketing the 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 paint schemes all over the place. The colors, it's you know, yeah, it's like a wild rat, a rat fucking a. Uh, Flying fish <laughs> with tangerines coming out of the ocean. It's probably a dog, right? Because it's a flying dog. Yeah, yeah it's a flying dog catching a shitty looking fish. dog. I don't know. The whole thing's fucked up. Yeah, I don't even know if they know, say who the artwork's from. But either way, I'm going to give this... Um, lots of bright colors. Yeah, lots of bright colors. Hang on. Oh, Stu's going right at it. You see that? Yeah. He was like, I'm going to give this. He's, he jumped in. I like it. I do too. Don't stall out on me now. I'm gonna give it a three and a half. Three and a half. Yeah. I like the tangerine flavor. I like the idea that they're giving back. This is definitely, but when they, maybe it's what you were saying, when it says it's a wheat beer, I'm not. It's not necessarily giving me that. Like I feel it's a little bit lighter. All right, so here's where I'm going to. This this is where I'm going to disagree with you. I like that it has the half of ice and vibe. It has that little peppery banana flavor that I think of as a. True Hefeweizen. Now, now a wheat beer doesn't necessarily have to have that. So right. I understand what you're saying. You're like, it's not like a wheat beer. It's actually more like a Hefeweizen. Yeah. Like a German-style Hefeweizen. But with that tangerine in there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What I can't wrap my head around is if the tangerine's too much or if it's just right. Yeah. And that's exactly where I'm, I'm dancing between. Well, just FYI, I'm giving you the extra .5 because of their giving back to the ecosystem of the Chesapeake Bay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wind power, whatever. <laughs> Didn't say that. <laughs> Oyster <laughs> power. Yeah, Oyster power. fucking hippie. So, yeah, I, I'm having a difficult <laughs> time with the tangerine because the tangerine is either over the top or just right, and I, I yeah. don't, I don't. But I what don't is it know. about this beer that, for me, and maybe you can explain it better there because I'm not the beer drinker, or I can't explain beers that very well. But it, like, everything goes away very quickly. 
Like by the, like as soon as I'm done drinking it, within 30 seconds, I can't tell that I've even drank this. What's beer. really funny about this beer is is what you taste on the front is what you taste on the back. It <clears throat> literally doesn't change. So it's just gone. What you get is what you get through the whole taste from when it hits your mouth. But if it's a nine on the front, it's not a nine all the way through. But you know, like, like some, a, you're like, you're like, oh, it was hoppy on the front, and then it wasn't. Yeah, like nothing changes. But no, this, this is like a this, blast of orange that just fades into nothing. But it all just fades. But it's the yeah. same flavor profile. Same flavor. It just right, right, right. fades. It's very interesting. Yeah, and I kind of like that. Well, right. I'm saying I get the flavor up front, and the flavor's still there. But like, literally. Right now, after 20 seconds of not sipping it, there's nothing residual. And yeah, I mean, I don't know if you based agree on, with me. Based on your argument, yeah, but Stu's used to high end umbrella drinks at this point. Like, I'm, this is I'm the, kicking this up because it's hot out and I'm in a long sleeve shirt. Yeah. Oh, okay. So I want something refreshing. I say it's refreshing. Yeah. It's refreshing. And I like a half of ice and I like banana flavors. The tangerine's a little weird. I wanted to go three and a half, but Stu has sold me it's a four. Yeah, I agree. I, I okay. I this again for those that don't know, tangerine, orange. I'm always in citrus. Mm-hmm. If you don't like citrus, do not drink yes, this beer. That's true. That's a fair. If you don't want to wheat beer, this is basically like a blue moon with an orange, but. Over the top, but so much more like the fresh, the, the freshest orange you've ever had. Yeah, <laughs> just crushed yeah. on so it. So if you don't like orange, you're going to dislike this. Yeah. I happen to like orange, so I'm going. And hefeweizen and wheat beers were what I really got into early when yes, the whole the jam, when the whole microbrew thing started. I really got into that, and it's so this is in my wheelhouse, and I was right there with you between three and a half and four. But I think I think I'm gonna go up. I think I'm going to trend up. I think it's a really good beer. I'm oh, go shit. Four. Yeah. Oh, nice. my wife was there right. You go. Yeah. She was right. So, so that's a, a four, a four, and a three and a half. I don't know what that is. That's uh, almost. Three and, it's over 3.75. Yeah, over 3.75. 3. 3.82. That's a deli. <laughs> Boom. The Flying Dog Chesapeake Wheat. And I don't want to call it, you know, tell your wife she's wrong. So. <laughs> in uh, that. That's flying. <laughs> I thought that was good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good beer. I would buy that. I would, I would uh, drink it, and I would tell other people to drink it. It's you know where good. that beer would be good? This is the situation right here. You got a cooler. You got an inner tube. Mm-hmm. Go out to the river. A little float trip action. Float down the river. That is a perfect float trip beer. And I, maybe, did you buy this warm? Oh, you bought a cold? No, warm. Yeah. So I'm thinking if it was just a little bit cooler, colder. What? Yeah. I think it's not quite as cold as I'd like it. Uh, but I can definitely go with, if it's a hot day on the river and this is like a cold, a cold beer. Steel. You just put it in there. No, I put it. It was in a fridge. It seemed really cold. <laughs> Mine did. I don't know if it's 38 degrees. I don't know. It certainly <laughs> seemed like a... Uh, a really good float beer. Yeah, but you did. Yeah, I was just saying you described that correctly because this is on See, a hot on a hot day. Yeah. You, so you familiar with uh, was it Fodders? F O D O R S. Never mm. heard of it. Is it a beer? No, it's a travel brand. Oh, like they they Fodders does like review books. Never. Heard. I'm not a traveler. Talk, Stu should know Fromer or fodder. F O D O R. Oh, well, I just like Fromers. <laughs> No, no, no. So, like, like if you okay. if you go into like a, a new town, mm-hmm. you know, you can get like a handbook. That was what they the, originally yeah, 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 they were yeah. famous for. You get like the Fodders book. Oh, okay. F O D O R S. Yeah, yeah. Fodders. And oh. that would be like they would they would give like their Fodders travel guide. That's a yeah. You got it. So like that was how you would find out like where to go, what to do. They they review areas. That's their whole thing. They're a travel guide. Okay. That's their thing. So Fodders dot com, the website, they. Uh, they put out a list the other day of the top 10 rivers in all of America for tubing. Can I get okay. a guess? So, I mean, obviously you're going to start like the Colorado River, like going through the Grand... I would assume it's a bunch of rivers I couldn't even name because they're not major rivers. There's some Wait, offshoots of major rivers. You're strictly staying to tubing? 
tubes. Yeah, yeah, tubing. for literally just, just tubing, not, yeah, yeah, no, not anything else. Laying in a tube, yeah. with a cooler, drinking <clears throat> beers with your friends, listening to your Bluetooth speaker, the Nile, the Amazon, stuff like that. Okay, you get it. <laughs> now, I'll this go. Is, I'll this say is the, America. I'll say one's in there from our state, maybe two. So here we go. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take them from. This is the top thirteen. I'm going to take them from 13th and then back. I'm curious as to okay. how many of these I'll even know. Can you do it in the David Letterman style of top 10? <laughs> no. because Oh, well, you want me to go to top 10? Oh, you know what? Yeah, you know what? <laughs> Screw. <laughs> I agree with you. Screw 13. Okay, so 10 is the Spokane River in Washington. Okay. Okay. Really nice outdoor offerings. Makes a good, makes a good flow. I hope it's outdoor. Really Indoor tubing is that an idea? <laughs> the the nine, nine lazy is, river. Nine yeah. is the, the the lazy river at uh <laughs> at uh Great Wolf Lodge yeah. in uh, Williamsburg. We got to go. Great. Nine is the Eau Claire. No idea. It's in Wisconsin, Wisconsin. Then you got the Portanoff, which is in mm, Idaho. No clue. Seven. Okay. You get the Willamette River in Oregon. All right. Okay. Which Willamette puts out. Great Pinot Grigios. That area is very nice. Texas, the Guadalupe. That is now, this is where we're starting to get into rivers that are very well known. Guadalupe, they actually do a music festival on the Guadalupe River right now where you, you park your cars at one spot and then you tube into the fucking music festival. That's nice. Cool. That's how dope that particular river is. Like it but is, that's not a border river, is it? Uh, it's Texas' most notable floating destination. Wouldn't that be cool if they just had bands set up every like hundred yards and you just tubed past the bands? That would be amazing. Oh, now we have a new festival to create. So this thing actually dumps right out <laughs> into the Gulf. So like oh, that wow. river, uh, that okay, river's okay. sweet. But yeah, they do that where you can like you can tube in every day at the end of the festival. They'll bus you back to the camping and then nice. you tube back to the festival, or you can stay. At, but is that like north or south of Browns Island in Texas? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. Because you're good dumping into the Gulf. Right, so in Mesa, Arizona, you have the Salt River. Okay. Great tubing spot. You got the Russian River in Santa Rosa, California, coming in at four. Number three in the whole damn country. New nope. James River. Really? Wow. From Scottsville to Richmond. And they talk about how you get diverse scenery all the way from urban to rural. To the jail. Everything in between. <laughs> but I'm just saying, I thought that was kind of yeah. dope that we That's made awesome. we made top three rivers in the whole damn U.S. Well, I know the James is what, the only class four rapids that goes through a city? Yes. I think, which yeah, is I've where always you, heard that. You stop tubing before that. Yeah. No. That is death. Well, in your <laughs> job, you should probably, you're aware of that probably. Yeah. <laughs> so the only two that beat it out are the Delaware River in Wisconsin. No, in Delaware. <laughs> And then the Colorado River, which, of course, Grand I mean, come Canyon. on, you get to yeah. go through the Grand Canyon, you get to all kinds. But so I was pretty psyched that the river that I tube on, on the reg, is the spot, like that's number spot, three, yeah. that's top three in the country. Well, the, but the crazy thing is, and that's is, spotters. If I you, mean, that's like legit, that's real deal. If you actually tubed from Scotts, oh my God. Scottsville, Scottsville to... Yeah, that'd take you forever. I mean, if the river's running at, the, uh, say, three to five, you're not going to be anywhere anytime soon. So that's a long, long float to go from where they say the best oh, part is. Yeah, yeah, because no, that's, that's a that's a great canoe. No, but Scottsville ride. is a great tube spot. So yeah. I'm actually I'm actually thinking about my wife and I are doing this thing. We try to go away for like a night every every month, like just to go somewhere, do something, mm -hmm. and it's my month to choose. Nice. And she doesn't know this, but I'm I'm gonna take her asses to Scottsville. Nice. That's good. I'm gonna get get a little shit over there. Yeah, and that's actually my my plan. Is like, I'm going to be like, all right, baby, we got to go here. Get well, on this so, bus. And we're just going to tube and drink. Yeah, because they have the the tubing spots that will throw you on the bus and take you up. Yeah, it's, then, a, it's yeah. a great little setup. And then you just cruise. And that particular tube is fantastic. I was yeah. waiting for you to say the New River from Tech to Radford. No. And you see, <laughs> we think that because we're just nerds no, like that. But it's a, that's a shithole, too. No, Fodders heard the podcast back when you were talking about right out Palatan, around the bend from the state park, you tubed. Yeah. And they're that's like, oh, we got to check it out. The Chinese people <laughs> notified <laughs> Fodders. Yeah. <laughs> Fodders is a Chinese word. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> listening. We're listening to you now. That's, yeah. oh, that's pretty neat. 
I was excited about that. Yeah. Like just the fact that that's like a legit travel guide. Like that's not some made up bullshit. Yeah. Like they rated us as the third best. You do see that on the internet. Like you'll find an article and, you, and you'll be like reading through it and you're like, who wrote this article? And it's like, Bumblefuck Nobody'sville fucking dot yeah. org. And you're like, oh, okay. Like, yeah, this is like, that's the equivalent. No like well, if a Michelin star restaurant, you're like, all right, well, Michelin rated yeah. it. Like that's, that's legit well, shit. It's funny because in traveling a little bit, now that I think about it, I've never trip advisored my own hometown. You'd like to see what's cool here? Yeah. yeah what, what is the top 15 things to do for a trip advisor? What are the top attractions? What are the... You know, restaurants. Top place like, to be, yeah. I always, TripAdvisor is the first thing I do when I say I'm going somewhere new and I never plan anything. I yeah, just you get never there do it in your it. own hometown. Yeah, I've never done my own hometown. Isn't that funny? You don't, you don't. Well, you probably think you already know, but I'm guaranteed there's new places and new oh, things yeah, to do yeah. you don't even know about. I, I literally hit up Jay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, because he's for, doing the food. For restaurants, bar. yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like, like I, I already told this story. We were, we were driving back in and, like, I want to go to brunch. Oh, yeah. I was like, I'm not Googling it. I texted Jay, and Jay was like, these are the two places. Or the as total over brunch people. They yeah, That's, the, that's yeah. the other people I'd go to. Oh, speaking of, remember how the as total over brunch people turned us on to the Nightingale ice cream bar? Yes. yes. So I started noticing that they had Nightingale ice cream bars in, like, South Carolina. Oh, they're like, expanding. Yeah, so, like, I saw them in, in, in Burt's, which yeah. is, like, the Folly Beach. Gro- they, they, had, they had Nightingale, and I was like, that's crazy. So I started looking around. Dude, Nightingale is in over half the U.S. right now. Really? Are they still made here? Yeah. That wow. little local ice cream bar hmm. peeps have blown up. Well, if you come, haven't come, had one of those. Come to Dude, Pride. go get yourself a Nightingale ice yeah. cream. If anywhere that's in the listening audience, if you oh, yeah. see a Nightingale ice cream bar, basically what they have done is it's a damn good cookie. Like, it's a gourmet mm. cookie. It's a bougie ice cream Gourmet ice sandwich. cream, yeah. followed by another gourmet. But then... They'll dip it in chocolate yeah. or do crazy shit. Crazy on flavors. You get. you get the fat Elvis. Bring the, come br- on. Bring the kids and come to the pool with me sometime. Nightingales all day long. Okay. Just Stop saying. There, I don't know. But yeah, I'm in. Dude, Nightingale ice cream bars are amazing. Are the shit. Hell yeah. Anyone who can get their hands on Nightingale. I went. There was one time. Remember those brunch bars when we had the ice cream? Yes, those were group? my favorite. And I can't find it's them like anywhere. Blueberry ice cream. It's, it's mm-hmm. very hard to find. So I found out that a restaurant locally had them, but I couldn't find them anywhere else. I paid retail restaurant price, $7 a bar, and I bought, like, all of them <laughs> when they came. <laughs> I spent a, a ton of money, but I just stacked my fridge with them. And I was, nice. My fridge, I was like, Damn. hell yeah. Like, so good. It was the best bar. It was worth $7 to eat it. Because yeah. truth be told... You can cut that thing into fourths, and oh, everyone's yeah. going to have a good time. So I'm like, seven bucks? Yeah, it's worth it. For sure. So back on the TripAdvisor thing real quick, because I think I saw it for you, Brennan, because I like to hype them. But did you go to the Midlothian Chef for the first time? Uh, I've been there like five times. Okay, maybe it was somebody else. Sorry. I love that place. Well, you're the one who turned me on. To it. Yeah, just yeah, I haven't gotten over there yet. It's, it's fantastic. Last time I went there, they had this fucked up thing. They, had like this, they were like, oh, that's a deconstructed chicken nugget and i'm like what the fuck does that mean sound that sounds disgusting yeah so oh, it gets worse <laughs> oh i know what it is he takes the fucking chicken right and he turns it into a moose Whoa. then he puts the moose into a nugget then he breads it and he fries it and that move to take it from chicken to moose back to fried gives it the consistency of chicken which i don't even understand why you would take that step yeah it's a lot of work to get there so good. <laughs> yeah. So we did a beer pairing with him one time, and he did the exact same recipe, but with sweetbreads. Interesting. This dude's weird. And it but was it's a, great. Yeah. He has a. I don't mean to get so local. Oh yeah, I mean, no. Like, but yeah. it was. But I mean, he's. What is it? Uh, he was at the Quirk Hotel for a long time. He was up at yeah, Little yeah. Washington Inn. He came from California. Guys, just no. It's fantastic. But the foods. But yeah, he, he's he told me what he does. I was like, how do you how do you pair things? How do you, what do you think? He's like, oh, I go home, I enjoy a little bit of things for myself, and then I start writing it. So that's the the <laughs> best advice I ever had. It was at the Vortex Burger in Atlanta, which I think is the best burger in Atlanta. And I go to the Vortex Burger. Yeah, you got the hat. I have two of them now. Yeah, I literally have the same hat twice. One of them's <laughs> beat to shit. It now goes to the gym and mows the lawn. And the other one goes out on dates. Ah, because oh. <laughs> I liked the hat so much. It's yeah. a Richardson one twelve. Of course. So it's the perfect fit. Yeah. 
But yeah, I literally bought the same hat last time I last time I was at the Vortex. I was like, oh, you still have that hat? I was like, I'll take another one because mine's just beat to shit. Yeah. So it's it's nice to have that. You should have a new Richardson Kindred hat. <laughs> yes, I do. It's a different <laughs> Richardson. For anyone who doesn't know hats, the Richardson 112 is the the perfect trucker cap. It fits everybody exceptionally well. Has just enough height on the front. The bill is just slightly bent, so it's almost like a flat brim, but it's yeah. not. But now Richardson's got outdoor hats. They've got other style 115s, 110s. Like my hat game has changed. I like a totally different hat now than when I did 20 years ago. Isn't that the truth? But my my hat collection is stupid. Oh yeah, I got oh, yeah. I got more hats than I can wear. That's for sure. And, and I, I have, have ones hat. that I can't wear that I've saved. Yeah, they're they're just spent. I got yeah, a lot I of still have them. like that. It's 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 a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. But yeah, the Vortex Burger that was to, to your advice. Mm-hmm. I went in there and I was like, look, I'm really having a hard time picking the burgers because they got weird burgers that like have like peanut butter spread on them. And I'm like, why would I want peanut butter on a burger? Because it's delicious. Apparently. Yeah. Right? yeah. <laughs> so the guy. Wait, Elvis was on to something. The guy says to me, it's, it's called the Elvis burger. And so the guy says to me, he goes, he goes, here's the only way you can figure this out. He goes, I want you to imagine that you are really fucking stoned right now. Now read the menu. Yeah. And I was like, okay. And then I looked down and I was like, well, then I want that. And he's like, that's your burger, bro. Yeah. <laughs> and he was spot on. And I was like, yeah. that is great advice. Like, but th- I, I assume that's actually what you were alluding to <laughs> with your little uh, top he secret. He can neither confirm nor deny. And I'm not <laughs> asking him to do either. But wink, wink. Yeah. No, I get no. what you're saying. <laughs> yeah. It's, All right. So this is global warming's fucking us up, right? I guess. I'm shifting gears. Really? Well, do you believe in global warming? Let's start there. I believe. On the daily? The sun comes up. Things get hot. I believe in Tim. <laughs> I believe in climate change for sure. Yeah. Oh, that's an interesting comment. So because you, I because I do think I I think that we think we're doing a lot of damage and I, I, and we're definitely changing the environment. But a lot of people that have this like doom and gloom thing with it, they don't leave their urban environments, and it doesn't take you long. And Stu will tell you because he travels the world. There's a lot of green space out there. There's a lot of wide open space where, like, you go. There is. The there water's is. fine. The air's fine. Like, and we're only one country, too. Like, what are we going to do when there's India and China well, over let me, there? Let me, can I take a step back? Yeah, sure. I, I said global warming, and you hesitated. Climate change, you were all in on. Do you find the whole term global warming offensive? No, I don't find it offensive. I just But think, it, it graded you, in a way. Uh, I just think that's... No, I think Troy took a. I think he uh, okay. thought about it. He's like, okay, I'm going to think about this topic. Yeah, but then he changed the term. I'm just trying to get to the the the. the nuts well, I think global warming is the the big red button that everybody likes to smash. So, do you look at climate change and global warming as two different things? I don't really think about any of it, honestly. So, <laughs> can I, I, the way I look at it selfishly is like I can't do but so much myself anyway. Like. I'm going to buy the car that works best for me. I'm, I recycle. I do what I can, but like I can't do but so much on my own. Well, I think, and the reason I asked that. And I'm not going to argue people with it. Like, I think, I think global warming became like a rallying cry for people who are like, it's CO2, it's all this. And then a lot of people denied global warming, right? Yeah. But then when they found a new term that was less offensive to them, climate change, they were like, oh, yeah, yeah, the climate's changing. And so it was it was almost a way to say, I agree it's getting warmer, but I don't agree that it's because of our doing. Yeah. And that's, that's kind of what I was getting at, like the crux of why you just changed the wording I used. I'm not saying you're right or wrong. Yeah. I'm just trying to understand. So is that part of it that you don't think it's a man-made thing or, and that it's just no, a I natural definitely, thing? I, th- I, think it's, I think you're silly if you don't believe that humans aren't changing clearly we have an things. impact on <laughs> yeah, the yeah i mean any parasite that lives off anything changes it and that's one the way or term. another that's the correct term we that's are what a, we are i fucking mean prolific parasite yeah okay i mean if you don't believe that i, re- I can't re- I, mm-hmm. I feel like that's just common sense it's just it's really funny that you brought that up because being in antia for the last 10 days they have oh, been, course. they were, they are on a five-year drought. 
and they're using desalinator plants and all this other stuff to get their fresh water. But when you talk to the locals who there's all these signs and they're like, oh, that's the politicians. They're trying to, you know, climate change, warming. We got a button, push button topic, all this other stuff. But you actually talk to people and you're like, well, the Sahara Desert has been kicking up a whole lot of sand and lately. And like, it's a, it's a, it's a cycle thing. Cause they were talking about how all the hurricanes driven, whether it's going to be a big hurricane season or not for them is based on the amount of sand that comes off of the Sahara desert that comes across the Atlantic and all this other stuff. Like this is, this is what happens. They're, they're this is, a real butterfly effect. <clears throat> yeah. They're just like, well, we have to deal with it. You know, like I learned all, I'm, we took a history tour. It's kind of cool, but it's like, well, yes, that's climate change. And is there things that are affected by us? Hell yeah. Look at the big strip mining things we're doing. Just to get lithium batteries for our cars. But well, nobody that's talks necessary. About yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but at the same time, you can, you can pick anything and make a point out of it. But okay, so not we, to can make affect, it. we can affect the world as a parasite. I agree with you. But there's so many there's things that are... That yeah. like if, if grasshoppers became overrunning the world, it would have an impact. Yes. Yeah. Right? And if humans, which we are, overrunning the world yeah. as an impact. Well, it's just like my like the whole like well, let's not eat meat. Okay, well, let's just till more land. Well, just tilling land kills off tons of insects and small animals. Like, there's of course, a, there's a there's there's no free lunches in nature. There's give and take with everything. With everything. Yeah. All right. So that wasn't actually my, but I just, I always find it interesting when somebody corrects me, and you didn't correct me, but no, yeah, you you seem to agree more with climate change than global warming. Fine. Either way, the temperatures are getting hotter. That's everywhere. Most everywhere. Okay. I, I mean, I really, I don't research this stuff again. Yeah. yeah. The, t the weather is going to, all I know is every time I look at the weather, it's wrong. So I really try not to even <laughs> focus. Yeah. Isn't that I the mean, truth? You know, the hotter, bottom line is we're, we're, we are recording more record breaking hot temperatures. The fact is, however you think, whatever you think is causing it, there was an ice age. There is not an ice age. Yes. There are hot times. There are cold times. Yes. This is the natural cycle it's of It's cyclical. Earth. Now, if we are accelerating it or not, that's where the political conversation begins. That's fine. And if we I could, would give if you if we, we can change it, can yeah. we can we oh. stop it? I mean, that's my whole narcissist. Literally. Like, we're narcissists. Like, we cannot stop if nature is going in a direction, but we can influence, which means. Maybe. Well, potentially we could stretch it one way or another back to what it was going to do. If we are accelerating it, we could slow our version of acceleration. But if it's going to accelerate, it's going to happen. I mean, the, yeah. look, being that I look at like we're the parasite on living organ, organism, I feel like the earth can affect itself more, of than, it can. more than we can by... God forbid we change a degree on our access. It will fuck everything yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. And then you can't fix that. Well, it's already... Well, you can read about it. I mean, granted, we won't be around as... Hundred thousand years, but the axis, axis, put like, north like, and south like pole. If we're the axis, we we're flat. flat. No, we're flat. Uh, even then, <laughs> boom. Even then, <laughs> I guess if it did go a couple shifted. degrees <laughs> off, we'd yeah. be we'd all be <laughs> wobbling to the left it's all gonna, day. It's gonna That's change a good shit. Point. Yeah. It's gonna change shit. Yeah, no, no, we one are those, flat. One I of didn't, those ice mountains on the edge might fall off. That's I hadn't thought I about that. I didn't mean to. One of the things they one of the things they talk about, which is a cycle for the Earth, is the poles naturally changing. No one's talking about pole locks. <laughs> Why are we? Why did you put an X on there? Poles. Poles. Yeah, I poles. heard what you said. That's racist. <laughs> we don't locks. care what the poles are doing. Well, I do because they are pretty smart guys. <laughs> <laughs> to Stu, that's what I yeah. love. I love that Stu looks up. Yes. <laughs> he aspires. Yeah. No. One day. I agree with you that we can accelerate the natural cycle and it will, the cycle's coming. I mean, we may speed it up an ice age. We may not speed up an ice age, yeah, but we could change happen. it by a couple millennia yeah. or, or a couple hundred years. You know what I mean? But in the grand scheme of things, a couple hundred years means dick. Yeah. Like this is a, this, we're talking millions of years. Hold another. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. What they say the timeline is like, if you put your arm out to one end, like, if you put your arm straight out to one side in the in your dead center of you is the start of time, like the very tip of your fingernail is just the known recorded time that we even know about. <laughs> like it's, right. yeah, and then it's, it goes on. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. No, so either way, I wasn't trying to get political. 
Either way, we are experiencing an increase in heat. And one of the things that is infecting, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, turtles, I'm a turtle guy. Oh, yes, you are. I'm my turtles. So the turtles that have been coming in and laying their eggs, right, in Florida in particular. This We're going to narrow it to Florida. Florida has heated up. Florida turtle. I've seen the headlines. <laughs> this motherfucker eating bath salts, right, yeah. <laughs> biting the heads off rats and yep. shit. Like Ooh. they're classic Florida turtle. <laughs> it's crazy what they do. <laughs> so the sand heating up. Yeah. So the sand is heating up. Like it's a little bit hotter. And, and eggs apparently, on. when you put an egg in the ground, mm, the temperature. Poached eggs. <laughs> poached turtle eggs. <laughs> so the temperature. Brunch all day long. The, the, the temperature. Daytona Beach. Helps uh, determine if it's going to be the sex. Female. Yeah, that's right. I remember seeing that on Wild Kingdom or something. Yeah. So depending on if it's a cool year, you get more males. So let me guess. It's a a lot year, of males are coming out. The opposite. In well, four both, years, in four years in Florida, of every single, and this is like, in science they don't deal in absolutes. They're dealing in absolutes right now. The scientists are like, every hatchling that we have like tagged and dealt with. Has been a female. Ooh. Because it's warmer and that influences more females being born. Gotta like the odds if you're a male turtle. Dude. <laughs> so, but what about. So you is, this, is this fucking, a certain. Type? You could have one eye, one flipper, <laughs> right, yeah. and you are fucking <laughs> slaying right. ass because. You're killing it. <laughs> literally. Got them lined up. There's a thousand oh, women God. like, I just want a dick. Yeah. It's this, this is the golden age. And that is oh. how the Florida turtle will be made. <laughs> yeah. 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 They'll be like, oh, look at this one flipper yeah. fucking turtle. They just swim in circles. Why that is that one flipper Florida. turtle smacking that other turtle around? Oh, he can. I can. That's right. Because that's yeah. the guy. Yeah. Like, not, not the guy. Like, yeah. he's the only guy. Yeah. Florida turtles way out kick their coverage. <laughs> if I was a male turtle, I'd be swimming to the coast of Florida. Just chilling. Dude, but is this, the, is this the same species of turtles? Because I'm like, North Carolina's going to be a little bit warmer. Some of the no, no, so it's, just, it's just in, in Florida they looked at it, right? And just all the species of turtles, like just, leatherbacks, whatever. Yeah, you know. whatever they're, they're okay. bringing off of the shore like that are coming in, they're like, damn it, man, like literally everyone. And so four years ago they were like, ah, oh, that's weird. Yeah. We just happened to get all females. The second year they're, now like, it could be a problem. they're like, bro, we got all more females. Well, now they're four years into it, and they're like, hey, we're going to raise our hand because this is getting a little weird. We haven't found a male turtle coming out of an egg in four years. So before. being narcissistic humans, I'm sure our scientists will figure a way to Jurassic Park it and be like, we're going to fix this problem. We're going to create a bunch of male turtles to yeah, balance close the, the numbers. Close the beaches and make and the turtles then, go north. Air conditioning units that yeah. are just yeah. blowing yeah. chlorofluorocarbons. I hear, I, 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 hear <laughs> stuff like that. I hear stuff like that, and I just assume that's the earth doing its thing, and there will be repercussions, and it'll the pendulum will come back the other way. Well, and that's, that's kind of what I'm thinking. Yeah. So, so I did a little more research, and in Australia, and I don't remember the exact time frame, but 99% of the turtles they have found in Australia are also coming off the beaches are all female. We could be in the golden era for that one, like, 100-year-old turtle. Yeah. The giant dog. Hmm. But they can't all end up female. Right now, we're seeing a trend. Now, granted, look, hmm. you're still probably okay in South Carolina, North Carolina, but we're hearing, look, if I had to say well, what's hot, you're going to be like, well, Australia's pretty fucking hot. Florida is pretty hot yeah. as far as the U.S. The hot areas, they are changing. I mean, they're just making female turtles right now. That's so it's really, I really would have liked to have learned that before I went to Antigua because I went swimming with the turtles. They, The temperature there has been the same for like ever because of where it is. And they're... I don't know what the sex of the turtles were, but we've also of, been, turtles awesome. I mean, my, our, my whole life we've been hearing that every coastal town will be gone in X amount of years. Sure. I'm just worried about the turtles. Yeah. <laughs> I don't give a shit about us. That's, that's true. It's so funny you say that because I watched, I watched some random television show the other day. It was like a sci-fi and it showed New York 200 years from now. New York, Long Island, or whatever, downtown Manhattan is still the same. There's just a 12 foot seawall, and the water's like up here. It's like, oh, well, that's. You know. Well, I saw something the other day said, like, the Statue of Liberty's elbow will be the new waterline. 
at the if if we get two degrees of, of this is on CBS. That's Sunday ridiculous. Morning. They said if 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 the the average temperature goes up two degrees, that what that would result in is in like. I think a lot of these shows just like to scare people. Sure. Yeah. I'm just worried about the turtles today. (laughs) That's all I'm worried about. How are you going to save them, Brendan? I'm going to blow on the eggs. (laughs) (laughs) It was funny. In Antigua, the the tide is only only, uh, 12 inches. Like, from... Weak weak tide. Like, there's no... Okay, so that's probably a place then... You're right in the middle of nowhere... That's probably a place where the turtles are doing all right. I'm yeah. just saying in these hot areas, I th- mm. I found that fascinating that for years now we have not seen a male. That fucking Kia guy is going to fix it, though. The guy that <laughs> hooks the rake up to the back of his Kia and drives around, picks he up He gets all, all the, the plastic bottles? Yeah, yeah, no, I saw that. Great you know commercial. Now Solid that- beard and man bun. I mean, he's going to save the day. Now that you mention it. Turtles is it okay to drive your gas-guzzling SUV up and down beaches? That sounds dangerous. I assume that was electric. Was it not? I don't think so. Well, he's not helping. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Just crushing turtles. They didn't show that part. Yeah. Running over eggs. He was gunning it through the through that beach, Dude, too. ripping. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> ripping. I would have thought some things would have gotten through there. Do you, you need to go 45 to pick up the trash? <laughs> I mean, I feel like just, you know, idling around would be good. And it wasn't that it much was trash that. you picked up in that short no. 30 seconds. How about... <laughs> Get a rake. Yeah. I guarantee you're not... Put, Get a friend to help. And don't fart, because that ruins the ozone layer. <laughs> Methane. Methane. Methane is bad. Cows are bad. Apparently, cows are horrible. Ruining cow, it. No, the ca- it's mm. not the cows, it's the farts. So cow the farts. cows have farted so much that turtles now only lay females. <laughs> Science. I turtles, the- turtles will become am- amphibian, where they don't need the other sex to... Lay eggs. We'll just figure it out. That's not the word. That's not amphibian. They are amphibious. I mean, not amphibious. Uh, what is it? What's the word? I if you do don't not need, know. It's, it's not asexual. Amorphous? Yeah, something like that. I don't know. Now I got to look it up. Oh. <laughs> oh, great. A lot of female turtles out there. Amorphous. I found it on the Google. It says right here. Well, I threw a, I threw a, a condensed matter. Nope. <laughs> Let's not go down this rabbit hole. <laughs> yeah. What's it called? Oh, oh now here we he's, go. He's on. He's, he's on a, the phone. A spin. Oh, I shouldn't have asked that. I said, "What's it called when auto sexuality?" That is not right. I go, "What's it called when you can have sex with yourself?" Wrong question. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> asking for a friend. <laughs> yeah. you that's still better, probably won't. That's a better you. question. <laughs> Oh my gosh! What? Oh no! No, now it's I'm you broke. You, let's get off this <laughs> yeah, subject. You broke the. No, now I need to know. You broke the internet. <laughs> Is it possible to self? Not good pod. Me? Self fertilization may also occur in a human. What? Oh yeah. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna have to yeah, break this down. There were testes in that chick's body. Whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> it got weird. And now the worst part is, I just told Google yesterday that it could use my searches to like oh, give no. me like topics. Yeah. Like oh. News. So now, now you're gonna be in all kinds of weird shit. Yeah, it's gonna be like, can you believe this penis came out of that labia? Watch when you're. <laughs> Be careful when you're having sex with yourself. You might get surprised. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's why I always tilt it up instead of down. I can only imagine. No, I was thinking what might pop up. Like, oh, I didn't want oh to get she's it. pretty hot. Oh, wait. If oh, you've been there. If you've now let Google. That's a, that doesn't sound right. If you've you now let Google. Again. Objection. Hearsay. If you've now let Google do that, I can only imagine what your news feed looks like on just. That's what I'm saying. To so, everything for the podcast and. Right and now, on. we got this. Amb- Why'd you give Google the go ahead on that? Uh, because my feed was like telling me shit about like the Kardashians. Like, I really don't care about yeah. the Kardashians. Uh-oh. I'd rather hear about like. Now you will. Now it'll hear that. Now. Yeah. Now, it's gonna be like, <laughs> now you've undone all your day and a half of work. Kim Kardashian's got a penis. Yeah. She can impregnate herself. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> Not well, good. Just side note, because I know this is going to come out in a little bit, but uh, first day of preseason football. Boom. Games were happening today. Boy, you missed last week. Yeah, well, there, there was a game last week. You were, were you in you Antigua? Were we were literally oh, watching I wasn't the first on game. The, I wasn't on the internet. We didn't have TV. Mm-hmm. Seriously. Oh, look at that drone. There was a sweet... Dude, I just got a drone. Did I talk about this last week, Troy? 
you talked about ordering it, I think. It's here. Actually, I don't even remember if you talked about it on the podcast. I think you just, no, you told me after the podcast. Ah, so basically there's this there's this new drone. It's the DJI Mavic Mini 3. Wait, they wait, make the wait, best. Wait. Real quick, drone. real quick. One second. I missed the whole first week of preseason. No, just the, the Hall, Hall of Fame, Fame game was last week. That's not preseason. It's literally a preseason game. It is. It's well, the first game of the preseason. Yes. Yeah. But yes, this week is the full preseason. Gotcha. But so I I'd been for the last like two years, knowing that like I wanted a new drone and I didn't want to spend after I dumped a drone into the ocean. Bali Beach. I didn't want to spend <laughs> a bunch of money on a drone, right? So I started using and you did my the dis- exact opposite. No, so I started using my Discover <laughs> card, and I would sign up for all of their five percent cash back. Like if you use if you use oh, Discover card yeah, to get yeah. gas, you can do that. You get five percent. If you use it at a restaurant, you get this. You use it at Home Depot or Lowe's, you get. So like every month, I would like religiously spend the fifteen hundred dollars, because that's the limit that right. they give you five percent. And I would like go make sure I always use my Discover card at those places. And I finally did it, and the Mavic Mini Three came out. Which Ooh. is a badass little drone. It's the one. So, drones, anything over 250 grams, you have to register. FFA? With the government. Yeah, you got FAA. FAA. <laughs> FAA. FFA. FAA. What's uh, FAA? What'd you say the first time? FFA. Oh, okay. I was like, hey, you nailed it. Freedom Flyers of America. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Future Farmers of America is how I know the FFA. Yeah. Nah. Fuck, fuck all. Yeah. <laughs> USA. <laughs> Winning. <laughs> so. I did this and I finally accrued nine hundred dollars in cash back, which is nice. what this Damn. stupid ass drone costs. But I've like wanted this drone because I want one I can put in my pocket. I want one I don't have to register, but I want it to have full four K video and be. And it, this one has a screen on the remote, like it's got all the stuff, right? It's got all the bells and whistles. Yeah, it's a thousand dollars. It should be. Yeah. Well, I finally earned my way to it through the bait, whatever shit I would already yeah. be buying, you know. You paid for it. So I got my free drone. Free air quotes. <laughs> free paid for it for yeah. months. Yeah. <laughs> I got my free drone. I mean, so long as you pay that credit card off, it was free. So you're not paying. I was going to buy yeah, that shit anyway. You were anyway. buying whatever you, know? you bought. Where, that. I was just like, if they told me to go to Lowe's, hmm. the best part is in the holidays. They're like, it's on Amazon. And I'm like, jackpot. Yeah. That's yeah. where everybody goes wrong. They don't pay off their credit card at the end of the month. Exactly. Yeah. So I just kept paying it off and I kept accruing the cash. Bingo. So I finally got my drone and it finally got here. Man, this thing looks like taking it out for a ride. I flew it in my yard around some stuff just to get my kind of my wheels, my bearings Your back bearing. under me. But it's so complicated. Is it like like I the drone it was itself? To get easier. No, no, no. Flying it is better. It's got sensors all over to avoid yeah. trees and shit. Quick question: Is it running off of on a re- remote or are you using your phone? No, none of that phone shit. I hate okay. that phone. I just scared. That's why I got the the badass remote that has the screen in it. So okay. touch screen, I can do all the stuff. Everything's right there. But it's so common. I don't understand what the hell is going on. It does more than you <laughs> even know it does. I'm yeah. Sure. Right now, I've done what a hundred dollar drone will do, which is fly around the yard. <laughs> yeah. I haven't figured out how to record or do any of that. But like, I'm ecstatic. Like I've got this drone, but. To keep it under the FAA regulations at that 249 grams, that's what it is, 249. Man, this thing's never going to survive a crash. The first crash I do. Oh, it's like. If I slam it into the ground, I slam it into a tree, it's over. You don't it's, think they've thought of that, though? Yeah, they've thought this asshole bought a $1,000 drone, he'll buy another one. Yeah. Oh, no, you bought a $1,000 drone, you just don't know how to drive it. <laughs> I know how to drive a yeah. drone. But isn't it light enough? It shouldn't do much damage if it falls out of the air. You crash it. So I put it in sport mode. And I flew it across this yard. Halfway across the yard, I hit the brakes. It took it from halfway across the yard before it hit the pallet house. It just stopped in time. Like, oh, that's wow. how powerful yeah. it is. And it uh, is extremely powerful. Now, you put it back in like normal mode or cinema mode, it's slow and docile and does its thing. But I was like, fucking sport mode. Yeah, you were. Boy, I almost I almost destroyed it immediately. <laughs> two minutes. It took me longer to charge it. Than Your backyard is not a good spot to fly. Drive. I understand that, but it's where it's what I have in my you know property. Yeah, but you should go, go to the go baseball. School. You should go to the baseball field yeah. in Troy. Yeah, that's what I know. No, I need to go <laughs> yeah. out there and like this weekend. I will go somewhere one morning and just play with. It. Actually, next uh, week when we when we have baseball practice or something, you can come out and fly it around and get some video. That'd be cool. Yeah, one foul ball away from I was just thinking the same thing. <laughs> Homer, right into the... F- <laughs> but no. I don't think you have to worry about that. <laughs> That's true. So stay in the outfield. I should be fine. 
just stay behind home plate or something. Like, do it while they're not hitting. Do it while they're fielding. Like, yeah, while the yeah I can do that yeah. for sure. I can do that for sure. Because it's got, like, Zoom functionality. It's got yeah. all this crazy shit. Like, I, I need to learn all the bells and whistles, but I officially... If a foul ball takes that thing out, it was meant to be. I'm like, back in that's the drone. True. <laughs> I'm back in the drone game. Well, good for you. I'm good back, stuff. and I'm, I'm ecstatic. Like, I've been, like, it, it sits there on my desk. So, like, I'm working all day, and I was looking at it like, you're, you're so cool. <laughs> But this thing, like the, all the arms, have you fold in? Have you flown it around the house? No, no, it's it's a little, it's it's wild. Is like, it as big as that notebook? No, no, way smaller. It's like your it's iPhone. It's about the size of your phone. Oh, and then like, it flips open the yeah, because and then everything flips yeah. out, ah. and then it's much bigger. If I were you, I'd like to sit at your office and like see if you could fly it all the way down the stairs, do a loop around your the yeah. downstairs. And they then make fly 50, it back up. they make fifty dollar drones for that, and I have done that many a time. Fly them around the house just on principle. Yeah. But this thing's crazy because all the footage is right there on my screen. Like I see everything. I'm I'm ecstatic. I'm gonna I'm sounds gonna, cool. I just hope I don't fuck this one up. We need to get some uh, ITPH promo shots with it. There you go. Yeah, I could. You can do the thing where you hovering. where you start and then just fly away, and we just get further and further out. It's got all the functionality where I can like go. I want you to look at this and then do that, and it'll just back up and do it on its own. Yeah, or I can say. Here's what we're doing. Pre-program a flight, around a flight plan. Or I can say, follow that person. Yeah, that's like, pretty through cool. Through the woods. Like, it does all that shit, but I don't know how to do any of it. Apparently, there's, like, buttons. You better figure it out. I'm working towards that. The problem is, I don't even know how to, like, sort an Excel spreadsheet. So, like, <laughs> I don't understand how. Yeah. I'm, I'm not built for this shit. No. Nah. I figured out this board, and though. And reading, so reading the, like, instruction manual is a nightmare, too. It's in Chinese. <laughs> that's yeah. the other thing nobody comes with instruction manuals anymore they just say go to this app download read watch a youtube video it's nothing you can like, it literally physically the, the instructions read. were charge it up scan this qr code right and you're like, <laughs> like, wait, what? oh wow <laughs> and, and you know what i did i charged it and went outside and flew yeah, it. didn't even i didn't scan QR, i haven't yeah. scanned the qr code no that's when the, that's when the chinese get operate get notified <laughs> Oh yeah, Chinese. they'll be getting all your info. Don't don't, I, don't I scan accepted, the QR code. I accepted terms and conditions on two different occasions. <laughs> yep. Booting it up. The Chinese know everything <laughs> about my yard. My yard is officially now Chinese property. Yeah, when I bought those tickets online today, I went to like Vivid Seats mm -hmm. and bought them and then like I got like then I had downloaded an MLB app and I got like six or eight emails like bling 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 like I'm like, oh, God, now I'm just going to get all kinds of crap. What phone number did you give them? I had to give them my phone number. Yeah, you're getting spam now. Yeah. Like, they're selling all that. Yeah. They'll make more money off of selling your data than they will from the ticket. Oh, yeah. It's heartbreaking. But what are you going to do? You have to accept it. You have to. Like, I want the ticket. Yeah. I want to go to the Cubs-Orioles game. Yeah. So you can have all this. Can't just call box office and say i need two tickets and my dad went and got some van morrison tickets the other day and he was like you know in his like old school brain he goes tickets go on sale at 10 a.m he got in line at the box office at the venue at like nine in the morning he was like fifth in line well then so he's not the only one with the idea no no, no. he said there was a whole line yeah right? did he get beat out so he said he stood in line right five people and he gets up there Oh, the internet crushed him. And they were like, uh, he was like, I need four tickets, Van Morrison. They were like, well, we don't have four seats together. He's like, it he just was like, went on sale. He was like, it's 10, it's 10, 15? 10, 10, yeah. Yeah, like, I just, I've been standing here. <laughs> and they were like, yeah, we can give you four individual seats. So he got four seats spread out throughout the venue. Wow. And I was like, Dad, you think you they'd leave a hundred or so, like, you for walk think. up, like, you would think for the box office, like, how about you reserve me a hundred of the ten thousand? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's all I'm asking for these people who show mm. up. Yeah. So now he's like, "Hey, I got you tickets to Van Morrison on and, a Wednesday. <laughs> Enjoy yeah. the show by yourself. You'll be sitting in, by yourself in DC by myself." And I'm like, "I he didn't even he didn't even did it sell out? Yeah, oh, oh, right it's away. Van Morrison. I can imagine. Yeah, right away. Uh, a lot of these old guys don't. I mean." When I saw Jackson Brown, he didn't sell out. Van Morrison. Van Morrison's a little bigger than I Jackson. I don't know about that. Oh, he's a lot bigger than Jackson Brown. I don't know about that. I would, Brown I would say Eyed Girl? Yeah, that's his hit. I know who Van Morrison is, but I mean, depending on the venue, it doesn't mean he's going to sell out every time. Man, I'm, I'm, I'm surprised he sold out immediately. That just doesn't, that seems weird. 
Van Morrison doesn't have what like venue a, is it? Might not be that big of a venue. Wolf Trap. How big a venue is that? That's it's an amphitheater. Never yeah. been there. It's oh Virginia Beach amphitheater. Do a like, favor. Go to Wolf Trap. It's amazing. You bring your own. You bring a cooler beer in. They don't even try to make money. The place Interesting. is amazing. Yeah, that place is beautiful. It's a state park. He should just nice. sell the individual tickets and then try and get a third party four together. Yeah, it's it's interesting. He never even told me he was getting tickets. I, oh. got, this, I got this text. He goes, I got the tickets. To what? Yeah, I was like, <laughs> good for you. What's happening? And then he was like, he was like, yeah, it's a, it's a Wednesday night. And I'm like, all right, we're talking about this. I don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> it's only 7,000 seats. So, yeah. that Okay, so there you go. So I was like, I was like, I don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> he's like, yeah, I got his tickets. And I'm like, all right, cool. And then he tells me, he's like, yeah, it's a Wednesday night. It's Van Morrison. They're not together. I'm like, I wish you would have told me like a Wednesday night is not an easy thing to like drive up to Northern Virginia. Yeah. See a show, drive back. So we'll, yeah, that's not. And now mm. I find out it's back to school night. Which my uh, wife's like, you sure as hell better be back to school night. And I'm like, but I haven't even had the chance to have this whole Who conference. cares about back to school night? My kid she missed does. his I, back to school yeah. night tonight. Unless it's a new school, it doesn't matter. Well, it is for our youngest. Yeah, but her big sister's been there. Well, so that's what I was, t- I was telling my wife. I was like, look, you're going to have to go. But like. The other catch is, yeah, there's there's like there's a hundred reasons this is going to be a problem. I wish I had known. I would have told him, hey, I probably can't make that show. Yeah, that's yeah. it's a nice gesture, but it's one of those things where it's like somebody gives you a big gift, and it's like I don't even want this. It's like someone like, giving you a dog for your birthday. Yeah, it's like mm. now I have responsibility, or like a piece of furniture. <laughs> like yeah, like like I bought you this lazy boy like I, that I would love to have a lazy boy I don't have anywhere to put a lazy yeah. boy like yeah. so now I got a Wednesday night concert at seven o'clock I gotta work right I have meetings right up until five so I'm gonna be racing in mm. and then I have a meeting the next morning at eight and I have back to school night in between like there's there's multiple problems <laughs> with this situation is that the first week of school like the 23rd 24th is it- no, he's back saying school? this back to school, like like where you go oh, prior and walk to. Around. Oh yeah, yeah. You like, meet the teachers, you do your thing. Yeah, it's been a while. So my wife's already like, I can't go. Oh, I'm like, I haven't even had the heart to bring it up. Like this is <laughs> a whole, this is a whole thing. We'll see how it shakes out. Hmm. We'll see how it shakes out. I I, I got a few weeks. Van Morrison. I I think I'd I would probably figure it out where I could go because that's probably like, like well, that's a bucket list for me probably to see him. I've seen Van three times. I haven't seen him at all. So like oh. Hey. No, I love them. I got an extra ticket. Really? Okay, cool. Yeah, you're you're going to have to. Get, you'll be in fucking, fucking Beirut. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you'll be. Oh. Um, quick Google search. Van Morrison has sold um, 11 million, 11.7 million uh, albums in the U.S., Six, just over 16 million um, total. Is that good? I would say that's pretty good. Seems big, yeah. but I don't, in relation to like Paul McCartney. <laughs> Jackson Brown has sold over 18 million in the United States. That's more than Dan Morrison. How is that possible? He has more hits. How is that possible? I don't know. I'm just telling you. Well, it's kind of like Grateful Dead only have one song that ever made the top 10 billboard. Yeah. That doesn't make any sense to me. That Jackson Brown. What? What is? What did you Google? Uh, official like album sales. Al- album sold. Album sold. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's a fair. Both of them just album sold. And that, I mean, that, that could. That's what popped up for each one. So who knows? Ooh, but what's the number of albums made? Doesn't matter. Who knows? I don't even. Yeah, you make one care. or make ten. I mean, I would think. To, I would think Van Morrison is a far more prolific artist than. Jackson Brown. I'm just telling you. Well, you would way, think that. You that also think I mean, I know out. both the artists and they're great, but that I thing really, sold out. Thought, huh. And apparently, 15 minutes well, was my well, crazy. 10 is minutes later, Jackson Brown out. didn't sell out Altria. That's 3,500. And Van Morrison sold out. It just, it just surprised me that he would sell out a 7,500 seat. I've seen Van Morrison sell out like full, like outdoor amphitheaters, like in no time. Like he's. Maybe that's like like Jimmy Buffett probably hasn't sold a ton of albums, but he sells a ton of tickets. Yeah, maybe like that's kind of the Van Morrison vibe. Like people come out of the woodwork. 
to see Van Morrison. I can only name yeah. a few of his songs. Like I, I don't have a prolific. He's got more songs than you realize. Yeah, yeah. You know, like every every movie seems to have a Van Morrison <laughs> yeah. song at some point. You know what I mean? Like he's just he's everywhere. He's good. He's good, but I mean, I yeah, I don't need to get into it. Yeah, I, <laughs> but I'm with you, Troy. If I had the opportunity, I'd go see Jackson Brown too. But I just didn't have the opportunity. Yeah. Well, you were busy. You were in Amsterdam. <laughs> uh, that's only somewhere you've been. I haven't, so I'll take your advice uh, on that one. Give it a month. <laughs> we wrap this up. <laughs> yeah, I got to leave tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, that's right. You got you got you leave tomorrow for vacation. Oh my gosh! And thank you guys so much for tuning in this week and every week that you join us. We really do appreciate it. If you haven't had a chance to grab your buddy's phone. And tell them when they say, what podcast do you listen to? Grab their phone. Cincinnati Swap That Dude. Yeah, always Definitely. works. 60% of the time it works every time. Sign them up for Inside the Pallet House. Subscribe them. We'd love to have them on board. If you haven't had a chance to uh, send us a bunch of Venmo money, yeah, we'll take it. At Inside the Pallet House on Venmo. That's the one. And if you have topics that you want us to talk about, send them to Inside the Pallet House at gmail.com. We would certainly appreciate that. You can always find us on Facebook. Just look up Inside the Pallet yep. House podcast. Super simple. If you need sunglasses, Lord knows you do. Everyone needs sunglasses. Multiple pairs. Head over to NectarSunglasses.com. It's already a reasonably priced sunglass for the quality that you get. And all you have to do is put Abacus in the coupon code and you get 20% off. That's right. You won't get cooler looking polarized sunglasses for a better price. I can tell you that. That's a fact. That's a fact. People stop me and compliment my sunglass game. All the the time. All the time. All the time. (laughs) And if you need a mortgage, please do yourself a favor. Head over to ScreendoorMortgage.com. Talk to our buddy Jimmy. He will take care of you. He makes what is already a difficult process very easy. I know Stu uses him. Yep. And if you need some real estate advice, hit me up. Also, if, if you if need insurance, hit up Brian with Tao Insurance. His, uh, uh, his meme game is getting dope. His meme game is <laughs> hilarious. I'm starting to dig that. Yeah. At least follow, follow him on, on Facebook. Facebook. Yeah, yeah, but uh, go to him for all your insurance needs. Tao Insurance, Ryan. Hit him up. Thank you guys so much. He's been a sponsor. He's been a sponsor. Many a many a deli. Yeah. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. We'll be talking to you next week. Cheers. Cheers. Peace out. Literally. He gone. (laughs) He's going on vacation. One night only. Yep. The fabulous Blues Brothers. (laughs) That's right. Two sells out. (laughs) Sold out. You gotta do multiple shows. Just one. That was a pretty good podcast, don't you think? <laughs>